So how did you come about like Always Sunny? Because I know you've done, that's probably your most, you've done like 40 episodes of that, right? I've done a lot. I've done a lot. Most of my adult life, it seems like, <laughs> been on that, which is now season 10 is airing. Yeah. And, and I've been watching it since college, so. Great. Nice. Yeah. Good. Well, that's your, what your diehard, uh, you know, our demographic. Absolutely. Younger men, you know, started out, you know, college age, a lot of soldiers. I know I've talked to a lot of guys who, you know, come back from Afghanistan and say, you know, if it hadn't been for It's Always Sunny, we were watching that in, you oh, know, wow. in the outpost. We never would have made it, you know. And I love that. I love that. It's a really strong fan base. Um, and so, yeah, I came to It's Always Sunny in season three. Um, they had done their first season, which not a lot of people saw, which is like six episodes. Right. Then they brought DeVito in season two and they did 10. And then I came in season three and I've been there pretty much ever since. How did you come about them or how did they come about you? Know, you? I was recommended to them by a great director, a guy named Dan Adias, who uh, is another mentor like Zwick, who's been really helpful to me, a really talented guy. And he had directed a good chunk of the first season and all the second season. Okay. And he was, he was off to do other things and you know, he was, he's a busy guy and he said, well, you know, you should, you should meet my friend Matt. So I went in and met those guys and, and they ended up hiring three former child actors to direct that season. <laughs> so I guess I fit their demographic. It was, uh, it was Fred Savage and uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Jerry, he directs a bunch, yeah. Jerry Levine who had been in, um, it's Jerry Levine, yeah, who was in uh, Teen Wolf and stuff. And so, uh, and then Fred and I continued on the next season, and then Fred departed, and I split it with a guy named Randall Einhorn, and then he left, and I was the only guy standing. Then I, so I did all of season five, I think. Okay. Yeah, and then ever since then, I've split it with a couple of other guys. Back to Sunny, you just shot that uh, single shot episode. That yeah. was crazy. That was such a funny episode, by the way. That was so funny. Oh, God. What was that like? One of my great That's great how I joys. found about you, by the way, because yeah. I love that episode. It was like, who directed that? And then oh. I reached out to you. Well, yeah. It, I'm really proud of that episode. Charlie Work, it was called. Charlie Work, yeah. I'm really proud of it. It was a huge logistical challenge because we Absolutely. had to make most of, you know, it's a, there's a section that's like 12 to 14 minutes that feels like it's one shot. And it's a lot of visual effects to kind of merge things. Because, like the doors and stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, because the front of the, the front of the pub is a location in downtown LA. The interior is a set on stage at Fox. Uh, and some of those sets don't even link up, you know, the basement, right. the basement's not actually downstairs up on the bar cause we can't dig into the floor of the soundstage and right. do it. So it's a separate thing. So we had to come up with some trickery and we redesigned our sets so that certain things could be done in the flow. Nor the bathroom had to get moved over into this really tiny spot near the yeah, edge yeah. of the stage so that we could kind of do it all in <laughs> one. And I do so much theaters we've talked about. I enjoy working on something that has a real game time energy totally where you know that you know much like i'm sure on er when they had those 12 minute long takes and people are spewing medical <laughs> jargon there was like if you fuck up it's like oh shit like i've screwed it all you just up. cost us a hundred thousand stop go back to one bring the chickens out you know and so there's a real thing where it's like okay guys we, we, we rehearsed it on the day before everybody kind of knew what they were doing the actors knew like oh okay i gotta be good tomorrow so they all went home to like really get it down uh, the next morning I showed up before the actors did with our full crew and we like worked out all the logistics and the camera guy who couldn't remember exactly where he was going to go. Cause he had so many moves and right. had a guy on headset, the other camera operator talking him through being like, Oh wow. Okay. Charlie's about to go to the end of the bar. Okay. You got to get ready to pan left and become a two shot. And like, so he, without that, those guys working together, it wouldn't have happened that we've got a team of PAs moving live chickens. We've got makeup artists yeah, I was like, say. hiding behind the bar and <laughs> popping up and making Glenn sweaty and dropping down and painting Danny black. And you know, it's, it's a, full on play and, yeah and we rehearse it we get ready to go and uh and we actually you know we just walked it through with 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 stand-ins and then when charlie came down and it's basically all on his shoulders i said well do you want to want to rehearse this the whole way through or should we just shoot this and he was like oh, let's just fucking shoot this right and it's the right answer because <laughs> you know it, you might as well just shoot it right if you get lucky it's great past those... that first take was great it wasn't the one we used we ended up doing i think 11 or 12 oh, takes wow. of it um for that one long section yeah um, but you know it had that had that great energy the whole time and we were working out all tons of logistical things the whole time that's um, amazing and, and then there were other sections that were long but not as long as that big right. one in the middle uh, and then we made it all appear like it was i was long. wondering how many people would run out when we like turn the corner to the alley or whatever and you said pa's like help with the chickens and stuff. Oh yeah, that's hilarious. I, I think you know you've got a GoPro camera here recording this session. We had a GoPro camera. I'd love to get the footage. I don't know where it is. Probably to be on the DVD when they put out this season. But above, like the back office in the pub, and oh above genius, the so we could see. You know, as soon as Charlie leaves and he's like he's yelling, he's like get all the chickens in the vent, and he goes he goes out. And then, a, you know, just a flurry of people coming there. And they're also chicken wranglers. Right. These are, 
these are chickens. Well, the, well, the, well, these are chickens that are they're they're cinema chickens, right? They're, so they're there with an animal trainer, and the Humane it's Society crazy. is yeah. making sure they're being treated well, right? Of and course. so it's not like we can just be throwing these chickens. So they're coming in, they're treating them carefully, they're moving them in and out, and then cleaning it up, getting rid of all the feathers, you know. Uh, so there was a tremendous uh, tremendous a progression to sort of where the bar ends up and where it starts, and then as soon as you yell cut, start again, cleaning right. everybody up. That's get DeVito insane. out of his black, black paint, yeah. <laughs> clean up Glenn, get everybody ready, get everybody fresh, and go back. Yeah. Normally, a single camera has one camera and a second camera, right? It depends. I mean, some, the single camera comes from movies where it literally was just one camera. But as TV becomes more and more, you know, there's, the pace is so hectic, oftentimes you will have a, an A and a B camera. And right. The camera's doing like a tighter shot at the same time. Sunny's weird. Sunny's like Arrested Development or 30 Rock or a couple of these where you have two cameras shooting both sides of a scene. Okay. So if two people are sitting at a table talking to each other. Right those cameras are getting both sides of the conversation. And the right. reason is so if any spark, any improv happens, you don't have to go and recreate Create it. it. Yeah. And then it dies. You know, when you go to the other side, you're like, remember that? What was that funny thing you said? Do that again. Right. And then you have to do 10 takes to get all the 10 versions of it. So right. we shoot everything as much as we can so we can have all the information. So any take is a fully editable version of that scene. Right. But we also try to make it feel like a single camera show. So one camera will bring the guys in through the front door at the bar and the other camera's hiding behind the bar and it pans them in, it sits them down, the other one pops up and right. we do the coverage and then the one that popped up carries them <laughs> into the back room and then they go in there and then, you know, stress that one, again. Yeah. <laughs> Your but job it, must be so hard. <laughs> I mean, on that but show, it's yeah, it's a lot in of that one take. You only use one camera, right? Did, or did only, you use two? Okay. Only used one. Yeah. In the script, did it say single shot, or was that your vision? No, it was not my vision. It was a, it was something that uh, I was up doing Fargo, and Rob called me and he said, uh, "We're doing uh, we're doing this thing." He they had been watching True Detective, and we're really oh, into sure. it. And there was a big oneer in True Detective, and he's like, oh, "We're going to do a oneer in which is a one shot, right? With no cuts, okay." Uh, and uh, so we're gonna we're gonna do a one-er for for Sunny this year, uh, and it's gonna be really fun. I was like, great, I'm ready. Let's That's do it. That's awesome. And had so you then, done one previously other than theater? Yeah, I, I had done a few th- longer single takes. Sure, you know where in you house know, or something uh, when he's walking down yeah, the you hallways. Yeah, long walk and talks, but nothing <laughs> like a full episode. Right. So they had this crazy idea, and it was based on True Detective, which is why. Um, uh, Glenn is always going, all right, all right, all right. He's doing like a McConaughey the whole time. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. a little nod to it. And that was where it was. It was just like everybody, you know, this, this show on HBO is getting all this attention. Why aren't they giving us attention? Well, we're going to do a one-er. You know, sure. Because like, we're always the, you know, the 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 forgotten, <laughs> lonely, sad, basic cable comedy <laughs> fighting for basic respect. And so we're like, all right, let's do this. And then Birdman came out. And Birdman yeah. came out months after we shot that thing right months after the jazz drum score had been written for you know and so everyone looks at it and says oh it's a Birdman homage because you have charlie freaking out and running around and it's one shot and there's a bunch of birds yeah and a bunch of chickens and you have a jazz jazz drum score and we're like oh no no now we're under the <laughs> now shadow you set the, the record straight yeah right yeah 